Hi, oh, hey everyone. Welcome back. Uh, my name is Aditi Ghag. Uh, I'm a software engineer working on Cilium at Isovalian. And uh, this talk is about uh, Cilium's use cases for terminating sockets uh, in the context of load balancing and policy enforcement. And uh, we will understand what the intent is uh, and ways to tackle it uh, over the course of this presentation. So this is how I organized my talk uh, to set the context for the problems we are trying to solve. We'll have a, a short introduction to Cilium networking. Uh, we'll then go over uh, some real world use cases to understand the intent uh, for socket termination. Uh, I'll then go over some of the approaches we evaluated. Uh, and in the end, uh, I'll share some of the notes from the uh, mailing list discussion and uh, call out some next steps uh, in terms of kernel patches. So uh, many of you would uh, already know uh, Cilium uh, is an open source uh, CNI plugin. Uh, it provides networking and security for containerized workloads, uh, such as in Kubernetes environments. And in order to do that, uh, it runs a, a user space agent in the control plane that runs on every node in the cluster. And this communicates with the Kubernetes API server to receive events for cluster entities like pods, services, uh, and policies. And it then shares this state with the data path uh, via BPF maps. And uh, in the, in the data, on the data path side, uh, we have P, uh, BPF programs that execute on C group, TC, and XDP hooks. So the data path. Uh, combines the context received from the kernel events and along with the control plane contextual information to implement load balancing, policy enforcement, encapsulation, and so on and so forth. So let's uh, discuss the uh, first use case. Uh, my colleagues have previously talked about socket-based load balancing in Cilium, uh, but let's revisit it in the context of uh, this talk. So, uh, Kubernetes has this uh, notion where uh, a set of logical pods are exposed via a service. So service is just a, a virtual IP, and then uh, Cilium uh, in the data path, it translates the service web to one of the backend IP addresses. And it receives this information, uh, or rather it uh, reads this information from the, uh, so uh, the uh, BPF maps that are populated by the control plane agent. So we have a C group SOC adder type program that's executed on socket events. Uh, and it operates on this SOC adder context where Cilium data path mutates uh, data, uh, the destination IP address and port. Uh, so for a TCP and connected UDP, uh, the service translation from service web to backend IP is done in the socket connect and uh, connect calls in the forward direction. And for the replies, uh, uh, the reverse translation is done in the receive message uh, event. And for UDP, just regular UDP, the service translation is done in send, mes uh, send message and receive message calls. So um, what, what problems we are trying to solve with uh, socket-based load balancing? Uh, Kubernetes environments can be dynamic, uh, where containers can come and go. Uh, so the one uh, implication of this dynamic nature that I want to draw attention to is what happens when service backends are deleted. Uh, as we saw in the previous slide, uh, Cilium does service backend uh, translation uh, where it selects the backend to uh, service a client request. And this selection happens only once uh, in the socket connect call. So when a backend is deleted, uh, TCP clients may get fin or reset depending on whether the service backend does graceful termination or not. So that's a cue for TCP client to reconnect. But what about connected UDP? Uh, connected UDP uh, are unaware of the remote backends going away. So they continue to connect to the stale backend IP address. So as you can imagine if we have uh, proxies like Envoy running on a node that intercept all the container traffic, it can see extended uh, downtime. And moreover, connections can be idle at times. So if you just react on uh, events like socket message being received or packets being processed, then uh, the, the idle connections can take a while to reconnect. 
So we ha have our first intent, uh, which is the ability to terminate client sockets connected to stale backends so that they can reconnect to the active ones. So let's go to the use case number two, which is around policy enforcement. Um, uh, users may want to apply uh, policies on the fly. So Cilium uh, supports L3 and L L4 uh, based uh, addresses based policies where user can dictate the intent uh, where, for example, they want part A, wants to talk to part B, but not to part C and so on and so forth. Uh, but there are other types of uh, policies that dictate how uh, uh, a set of uh, application traffic need to be redirected to a subset of uh, pods running in the cluster. So let's take a, a real world example. Uh, Kubernetes uh, has this feature called as node local DNS and it's aimed at uh, providing optimized uh, DNS performance. And uh, in general, uh, clusters, clients can connect to local as well as remote backends, uh, which service the DNS request. But as the name suggests, a node local deployment, uh, node local DNS, excuse me, deployments uh, uh, have a uh, node local DNS cache uh, that services DNS request. And uh, in this uh, um, in this uh, particular case, uh, users expect that uh, Cilium consistently enforces uh, such policies. So that means even for existing connections. And uh, let's take the example of the Envoy proxy again. Uh, in this case, even if Envoy has a long-lived connection, uh, users would want, uh, or other Cilium would want to uh, want a mechanism to refresh this backend mapping. So uh, we have our intent number two, uh, which is the terminate client sockets, uh, socket connections prevented by applied policies. And um, so uh, that's it from the motivation side. Uh, uh, we have our use cases, which, are, which is not an exhaustive list of things, but hopefully they give a sense of uh, the problems we are trying to solve here. So let's revisit our, our problem statement and break it down into two steps. The first step is how to filter sockets that need to be terminated on certain events. And the second step is how to actually forcefully terminate such filtered sockets. So step number one, um, let's say we have uh, control uh, plane events, uh, such as a service backend is getting deleted or uh, policy is being applied. Uh, in this case, uh, Cilium uh, uh, needs, to, uh, needs a mechanism to filter sockets based on, for example, the IP address of the deleted backend uh, and in such case, uh, we evaluated a, a few approaches. Uh, so the first one is using the, uh, so the kernel has a, a SOC diag infrastructure to query sockets data. And uh, the SOC diag, as the name suggests, it's, uh, it provides the diagnostic uh, data related to sockets. Uh, so this is exposed via uh, the Netlink uh, subsystem. And uh, this is, I, I've highlighted some code snippets on how users can craft uh, Netlink messages. So they would set the Netlink message type to sort diag by family. And then uh, if they're trying to query TCP sockets data, then uh, they would go ahead and populate this inet diag rec v2 struct uh, where they can send, uh, set the extension to inet diag info. So, um, so for example, TCP, you could, it provides some kind of filtering. So for TCP, you could say that, hey, I, I wanna get a list of uh, established sockets. So the downside with this approach is that it provides very limited filtering capability. So uh, Cilium will, ha will have to do the filtering itself uh, in the user space where it can match the destination IP address or some socket metadata such as socket cookie. Uh, more importantly, it requires entering every possible container network namespace on a node, and which can be really cumbersome in uh, high-scale environments. Uh, because the uh, Netlink in infrastructure, the SOC diag infrastructure in uh, particular, uh, it matches the network namespace of the query with the, uh, the sockets that are being queried. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the second approach is using the BPF iterator. Uh, so BPF iterators were introduced in kernel 5.8 and uh, they make kernel data available to BPF programs for further processing. 
uh, sockets, TCP and socket, uh, UDP uh, sockets are uh, the supported targets. Uh, uh, and uh, as they provide access to the socket structures, uh, the kernel structures, uh, it facilitates flexible filtering of sockets. So you can match on the destination address or even the uh, socket metadata like socket cookie. And uh, it provides the most up-to-date up uh, view of sockets. So this is a very promising approach, uh, but as uh, similar to the SOC type uh, uh, approach, it, it, it's network namespace aware. The problem is that in, in BPF programs, Cilium does have uh, additional context, like for example, network namespace cookies, but there isn't an easy way to map this data path context to user space network namespaces. So uh, we'll, we'll keep this uh, approach uh, in mind for now, and let's move to step number two, which is how to forcefully, forcefully terminate the filtered list of sockets. So uh, the first approach is uh, kind of intuitive. Uh, when, whenever Cilium agent uh, receives uh, service backend deletion events, it can add an unreachable route for the IP addresses belonging to this uh, to these backends. So this is what the IP route would look like. Uh, the problem is that it's only effective for new connections. And this isn't super helpful uh, because Cilium supports graceful termination, uh, meaning when uh, service backends are deleted or rather getting deleted, uh, Cilium, will, uh, Cilium will let the existing connections to this backends uh, terminate gracefully. Uh, but at the same time, it won't select this uh, backend for to service new connections. So uh, let's take a quick detour. Um, when a backend is getting deleted, uh, there is a uh, Kubernetes control plane agent called as kubelet that run, runs on every uh, node. Uh, it instructs. Uh, so firstly, we uh, Cilium agent receives an event uh, for the terminating backend. And at the same time, kubelet instructs container runtimes to send sick term signals to the backends. And if the backends uh, have some graceful termination routine, then in those routine, they would set, send reset signals or fin signals for graceful termination to uh, back to the clients. And if there is a, a graceful termination uh, period configured on backends, then at the end of this period, the uh, container runtimes then uh, sends the sick kill the signal to the uh, pods. So bottom line is, uh, in the established state, TCP and connected UDP just ignore ICMP errors. And so this doesn't solve our uh, use case. Uh, so the next uh, uh, approach is using the SOC destroy API uh, that kernel provides. Uh, internally, this API invokes handlers to abort sockets. And uh, these are so protocol specific handlers. So currently there is support for TCP, UDP, and raw sockets. Uh, so the first step, it, it, does, it sets the socket error to econ aborted, which indicates that it's software caused uh, connection abort. And then it uh, ensures that uh, it, it sends a reset signal back to the client so that the client can uh, yeah, the client state is uh, for our TCP connection. Uh, uh, the client can just uh, terminate the connection, and then uh, it will disconnect the socket state for UDP. So that involves disassociating destination address port, and then finally cleaning up the socket state uh, altogether. Uh, so this is also exposed via netlink. Uh, you would, uh, in such cases, users would set the netlink message type to soc destroy. And the expectation here is that users would first query sockets uh, data be, uh, using the SOC diet uh, in, in interface. And then based on the information, uh, the socket information that it receives from that query, it would populate those uh, in the SOC diet uh, interface. So this is quite effective, uh, but there are downsides. Uh, so uh, the Netlink infrastructure, the SOC destroy infrastructure specifically, it's behind uh, the special config, which is the config I, inet diag destroy. And this is disabled by default. Uh, so this is a common theme, which is the network namespace aware uh, checks that we have here. And additionally, uh, there's no uh, BPF helper available for this SOC destroy API uh, as of now. 
So I send this, uh, send the use cases along with the evaluated approaches on the uh, mailing list. And people see uh, value in having a global socket generator uh, because it's cumbersome to enter every possible container network namespace uh, on a node. Uh, there was a su suggestion uh, from uh, Martin uh, on having an all NetNS socket iterator target for TCP and UDP. And as for forceful termination uh, API, uh, we can have a BPF API, uh, or rather, excuse me, a BPF helper. And uh, there was an interesting suggestion on for UDP specifically, with, uh, whether we can connect to some other backends instead of just doing uh, a bot. So th thanks a lot for the helpful discussions. So uh, in terms of next steps, uh, I have RFC patches for adding a BPA helper to uh, about sockets. Uh, I've tested this using a new self-test. Uh, and I've just uh, added snippet for the uh, helper. So this is what it looks like. Uh, uh, the, the, the main thing to look at is, is the how it invokes the uh, protocol specific type destroy internal uh, API. And I had to extend this, uh, the function signature to accept uh, a third parameter, which is whether to do locking or not. Uh, so the iterator, BPF iterator already acquires a, uh, the, the socket lock. And so we, we need not acquire lock it in the, acquire the socket lock again in uh, type destroy. Uh, just additional note, the self-test uh, mirrors the intended usage of uh, the API, where the self-test uh, uh, adds two, uh, BP, attaches two BPF programs. Uh, one of them is the C group sock adder program, where, uh, well, where, where it records client socket cookie in BPF map. Uh, and these are the clients that are getting connected to servers. And then uh, the second part of the test uh, starts uh, and it, it uh, starts an iterator. The iterator uh, retrieves socket cookie for the uh, socket that is iterating over. And then if it matches with the socket cookie that's recorded in the BPF map, then it goes ahead and uh, invokes this, uh, the new uh, BPF helper. So putting it all together, excuse me. Um, uh, on uh, LB, uh, like load balancing events, uh, BPF iterator can iterate over sockets. It can filter sockets that need to be terminated based on uh, the destination address or socket cookie, uh, matching the socket cookie. And then uh, eventually it can invoke uh, the sock destroy BPF helper. So um, I think we can optimize this further. Uh, we have a, a, a greater visibility in the data path where the CDM BPF uh, programs can record client sockets to backend mappings. And we can save this client sockets uh, in a sock hash pipe map so that uh, when a uh, backend is getting deleted, it did not, uh, Cilium did not iterate over all sockets on a node. It can just filter, uh, or rather, it can just terminate the filtered uh, uh, client sockets. So this is a summary. Uh, uh, load balancing and policy enforcement use cases may need forceful socket termination. Hopefully some of these use cases wipe with uh, some, some of the trapped, uh, problems that you're trying to solve in your clusters. Uh, so the BPF iterator socket target can help us uh, filter sockets and then the sock destroy uh, BPF helper can uh, help us to terminate sockets so they can deconnect. So I've added some uh, open questions uh, for follow-up. Uh, so, for example, there was an interesting suggestion to connect uh, to other UDP backends instead of just plain abort. Uh, I anticipate we might have to account for locking, similar to the uh, BPF helper changes for SOC destroy. And also, I'm not sure if we have uh, um, a conversion uh, helpers to convert from BPF SOC adder to like just regular SOC adder structure. So something to uh, follow up on. And then uh, there, was, uh, th there was a note uh, on the mailing list discussion that uh, uh, in future, we might have uh, poor network namespace uh, socket hash tables. In this case, it, it, uh, it, it's an open question how uh, we could have like a global iterator. 
So uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, are there any questions? Any questions, feedback? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I understood why you need to iterate all the network namespaces. Is it just a user space mapping problem? Because presumably the application runs in a single one, right? And you know which one it is when you apply the, no? So what was the last part of the question? Uh, so that, if you have a policy applied to an application, that application runs in a single network namespace, why do you need to iterate over the entire node? Right. Uh, so Kubernetes pods have their own network namespace. So. Uh, clients could be running in uh, different network namespaces. So, oh, so you're terminating the client side. All right, yes. I missed that part. Yeah, the backend is already getting deleted. So it's the client side that needs uh, some kind of queue. Yeah, I think that, that uh, SOC hash or something like that is, should be super useful. In general, some way to, I don't know, tag sockets so we don't iterate over them. is something I guess we need to do because we also, I think, have some some cases where we would like to basically reset the policy of some set of sockets, but iterating through all sockets is expensive. Mm -hmm. So something we can do here would be would be great. I don't know what, maybe this map is what it is, or maybe something else, I don't know. But yeah, something to think about, I guess, would be awesome. Yeah, this is promising. I guess the other option is to store uh, the tag that you mentioned. It could be the socket cookie. Uh, right, but again, what I need, I basically need, uh, I don't know how many sets of sockets I have, mm -hmm. right? I guess if I have a map per set, it might be complicated, but I also need to have, but then I don't need if it's, yeah, I basically need to store some key and a set of sockets, some key and a set of sockets. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what this optimization is about. There's a question at the back. Um, uh, one question is, you mentioned you need socket cookie, you, why you need it? You don't necessarily need it, I, I was just suggesting to uh, him because he mentioned that he needs some kind of data to tag okay. to uniquely identify a socket. So a uh, second question, can you go back to the helper uh, slide you have? Now the self-test. Oh, um, so instead of helper, so May, I think it's better to directly expose it, the K function. So the SK, SK pop, diet destroy. So directly expose this one. I think that may be, yeah. So instead, so for example, instead of taking the socket pointer SK for UDP, you may directly say stroke UDP sock pointer socket and then expose that K fund specifically for the UDP socket. I think that will be. You know, instead of wrapping everything here, and then you test the whether this die destroy is, is there or not. Oh, that's an option. Oh, sorry. Are you saying that instead of so in, instead of doing all this testing, SK to full socket, and then SK full socket is now or not? So um, you can we can take out all of this and then export the K function, and then. And then the K function will take the UDP socket pointer, and then the verifier should take care of all this type tracking, or SK, SK, full sort. All this testing can go away. Yeah, the log, um, yeah, the K function, the K function, when you expose the K function, the K but, then, function but then do you have control of where you can call this K function from? Because it might be like, this might not be callable from everywhere, right? Yeah, something like the, what we do in the get sort of and send sort of right. So, right. Where, so the so the log socket function will take care of the contents. Okay. So I, I, at least right now I followed the uh, usual template where we end up adding a new uh, BPF helper. Uh, this was prior to Alex's talk yesterday. Uh, yeah, I haven't fully grasped the implications of uh, the the modern BPF uh, proposal yet. Uh, we could iterate over this on the mailing list. Yeah, we can take it offline. Uh, Jacob here. So Netlink uh, SOC deck today has a, like a primitive M that allows you to filter 
which sockets you're interested in, well, as you mentioned. Uh, have you considered extending Netlink so that we can provide a BPF program which decides which sockets we are interested in? Because uh, as opposed to the all NetNS target that you're proposing, perhaps I'm interested just in some network namespaces, not all of them. And uh, by being able to provide a BPF, which is a predicate that Netlink calls to filter out the sockets, that would allow me to implement any condition I want, essentially. So that, that sort of becomes the same as BPF iterator in the sense, because the, the BPF iterator approach has sort of an upper hand because it gives you access to the whole socket structure. So it provides you more flexibility versus in this approach, you have to do two separate queries. One is to query the socket data and then a follow up query to actually destroy the socket. Uh, right, it would still be two step, correct. Uh, not for the BPF iterator. The BPF iterator, you would end up invoking the BPF helper in the same call. Okay, okay, I see the advantage there. Another comment I had uh, was about reconnecting the UDP sockets to a different backend. Um, so right now, it's only possible to dissolve a connection the, uh, for sockets that were auto binded by the network stack so i'm not sure if you would be you will be able to do it for all connected udp sockets because if the user has given you a source port and selected it exactly you were holding holding a port log there and uh, there's nothing we can do about it today from user space and you can't really reconnect it because you might create a conflict with another socket just a thought hmm. okay thank you yeah, it's something I need to experiment with. Uh, it, it was a suggestion that came up on the mailing list, and uh, it seems useful, at least for the policy enforcement case, uh, but I don't have the full detail. All right, any last question, comments? Thank you very much.